I am a composer. I come from a sort of predominantly jazz background, but then I've moved into interactive media and I'm just going to leave it like that for now so I can see what's going on. Um, and I started off with physical installations um, and I basically, I became a composer because I picked up a fair few instruments between being born and uni and, um, and it became clear that I couldn't be as good as I wanted to be at all of the instruments. And so I decided like, you know, how, how do you get good at all of the instruments without having to spend 10,000 hours on each one? Um, and that was become a composer, yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, and as I started working with other people, with dancers and things like that, I ended up sort of thinking that everyone else, ev all the other disciplines are also instruments. And I can't spend 10 years getting good at every discipline, so how, how do I do that? You know, become a composer of all of the disciplines. Are you still, still with? Yeah? <laughs> so I became this sort of, I like, art director sort of role, um, which is where I sit between now, is this sort of composer and art director. I like to work with other disciplines a lot and they really inform my work to the extent where I'm not very good at making music without another discipline in mind. Um, and now it's beginning to be with another sort of interaction in mind as well. Um, and I got into games a few years ago, slightly before I met Xavier, um, although not long before, maybe a year before, which is interesting. I've never thought of how long I've been in games, but anyway. Um, and that seemed to be art of interaction and systems and visual and music and choreography and writing, which I wasn't into beforehand and now I have to sort of get into. Um, and I had a lot of trouble thinking about writing as well until someone told me that I could think of writing in the same way as I do notation and then everything sort of clicked. So I just have to remember that whenever I get freaked out about writing anything. Um, so I'm going to conduct this like a bit of a class. So maybe, so please, please talk to me. And I'm going to get everyone to like put up their hand or just blurt out, blurt out stuff. <laughs> We're going to talk about sound in media. First, we can think about like film and theatre. What role does sound play in film? Hands up or shout out. Yeah. Mood. Mood. Identification. Identification of what? Persons. Per scenes. Okay. Um, yeah. What is scenes? Uh, especially like persons. We okay. use mu music to identify actually persons. There's words where So other than looking at them? them? Yeah, exactly. For example, yes. it's yeah, going to be so called light mot uh, lead motive. Yeah, so it's the same in, same in English. Yeah, we use the German perfect. word. It's <laughs> <laughs> just getting the story. Yeah. Um, cool, yeah, so motifs attached to physical things, yeah, and mood. What else? Genre. Genre. Could be like a sci-fi or Hitchcock music to a romance or... Yeah, yeah. And there are elements within the music that would suggest, yeah. So on that, sorry. Yeah. Period. Period. Yeah. So setting. Yeah, definitely. Um, where and when as well. We'll put that into period. Yeah. Off yeah. screen action. Yeah. Did you notice gunshot that you never seen? That sound. Mm -hmm. No, that sound. What do you? Oh, with the. Oh, sorry. Well, we're going to go through all of it. That's that's <laughs> really good, <laughs> and it's a great segue <laughs> into what I was about going to go on to next. Does anyone else have any more ideas? Maybe. There's also pacing as well. Depends pacing. on how fast, how slow you make the go in terms of your expectations of the next. Yeah, definitely. Or so theatre should be. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. High street instrument. Exactly. Murderous, right? Definitely. You look at the door, a violin comes in. You can see through the door. That just means that the murderer is invisible. Um, negative soundtrack. You've been listening to music that's suspicious as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell happened to that murder? Oh God, now there's a track. Okay. <laughs> Is there anything else? Transitions. Um, yeah, yeah. Insert, yeah. 
we can definitely smooth over scenes. So mm. the pacing and transition definitely um, is where the music sort of counterpoints with what's happening visually. Yeah, so the visual might be just that. And let's say it's a photo because they could only, they couldn't get um, a visual of no one walking past for long enough, so it's just a photo. Mm. <laughs> and <laughs> and the, the drums going boom, 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 mm -hmm. boom, boom, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. See, nothing is happening, right? No one walked past after I started the drums, so it's all good. Um, but that tension is rising, so there's yeah. all of this information that isn't on screen, which is where also those gunshot sounds and things come in. So where music um, starts to fit in after that is this sort of notification. So this is where the interaction comes in. Yeah, something has happened and you're like, oh shit, I better check my phone or something. Um, and this is where it sort of comes into games as well because a lot of interaction in games is based very quickly off visuals. Um, and there's nothing better, you know, than like there's an enemy on screen other than there being an enemy on screen. Like music is not going to replace that at all. There's no better way of, of telling you that there's an enemy there than one being there, yeah? Um, but what music can tell you is something that is off screen. So we went through that with film, definitely. Yeah? Well, in, with respect to Sonic the Hedgehog, yeah. if you met the boss at the end of the level, like, yeah, the enemy appears on screen, but you need the music to change to sort of know, oh, there is the boss. <laughs> is the boss not, like, bigger than all of the other enemies? <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> so this is definitely the boss. Speed, like, it's not just no normal enemy. Well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does the soundtrack come in before the boss comes in? No, it's just the, the boss. It's yeah. like at the same time. So. Yeah, right. Yeah. A little bit before the boss. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes your the original soundtracks may sort of fade out, you know, and that's still used as the soundtrack of like, oh, something's going down. Um, I mean, this is in the 90s anyway. <laughs> yeah. They didn't know how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Now we're talking about years. So it's <laughs> the fair few tools that came out in the 1990s. What am I going to go and what are people interested in next? Am I going? We've got three minutes left. What? No, no, you have more time. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have at least three minutes. Three minutes. All right, cool. Um, so when Swan so and I start working in games, we start thinking about notifications. So what other really cliche things? come up, you know, when something is going to happen, what more information can we get that isn't visual? Any ideas? More than visual uh, notification yeah. that isn't sound. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was right <laughs> <that> really <laughs> silly. Um, uh, things that are happening in, in game, yeah, that would need a notification that is not visual. So that is sound. <laughs> no, it's sound. Sorry. <laughs> what more things could happen in games? You die. Yeah, well, no, it's a pretty visual Definitely representation like of games. Behind you. Yeah, something's behind you. Yeah. So that comes up a lot is, you know, you're in a forest, you look that way, violins come in, you look that way, they go back out again. <laughs> Something has spawned. Yeah. Like a health pack, even. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be an enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Or the opposite dropping something. Yeah. Because yeah. you oh. probably don't get a visual cue either. Right? And, but you That's can get true. the orientational position with 3D. Mm. I mean, so. Um, yeah, yeah. Or, or 3D. So that panning or, you know, yeah. even the stereo is going to change which way your camera is focusing. Yeah. If your character is being looked at. Yeah. Hope there's a visual for that as well. <laughs> yeah, you can see red. It's all over red. red. Yeah, yeah. And definitely. Um, and die when you die. But just environmental cues as well, you know. Like but that's not. Ah, so you just want to. Yeah. Just because someone's having a someone. conversation with your character, they might be just walking right beside you, but you don't have to look at them. But suddenly they, they are silent. They are dead. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, so even for his characters and things, it's a very, um, it's part of the role of the sound designer or the audio engineer or the composer, whichever role you're taking, roles, um, to decide when a character's voice is going to stop. So in a lot of like role playing games and things, um, it's quite important to the story what the character is saying. So even if you've gone walking off, that voice will still be there, <laughs> um, which is interesting. Happens in Skyrim a lot as well. Which is you know you walk past someone and you click on them and you you read it really quickly and then you walk off and they're still going. Um, there's a point also I think in Skyrim where you can't even open a door until the voice has stopped talking. Like that's that's the extent that they've said, you know, this this is really important. Which sometimes I wish that you know you just like speak faster or something. <laughs> <laughs> what when you click on the door, it speeds up. Yeah. Just what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, environmental sounds like living in a forest with your birds when you're in a cave with your little room. Yeah, and definitely. Yeah, also like birds could like die and you get them oh, pee, 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 pee. Ah, well the sound yeah. is that. Yeah. 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 So you visualise the sound. Oh, some some games for like the sound as a reward, so let you know you've done the right thing. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we did that when we opened the beer <laughs> earlier. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's good in puzzle games. Um, there's a couple of games, and one I'm working on at the moment, they're thinking about doing... So they've got, they've got this algorithm that can figure out how many turns away you are from solving the puzzle. And the soundtrack, they want the soundtrack to change based on that, mm -hmm. to get slowly more positive the closer you get, but also get negative if you fuck up and <laughs> get slightly so further away. Or yeah, if you don't yeah. have enough turns to finish it, does it know? Or is um, it turns no, are limited? Well, there is a setting where turns are, turns are limited. So we are thinking about, do we just have two different scores or do we have two different interactions with the scores? So does the score come out in this way for when you have limited turns? Or does the score come out in this way when you are closer? So there's like endless mode where you could, yeah, go on forever. Anyway. So that's interesting and I think in games um, music is becoming more and more like data and trigger based I guess um, which is pretty good for electronic musicians because we're all pretty used to trigger based things using tools like Ableton and things that are triggery um, and <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> using MIDI controllers and things that you know should just be able to trigger a large new set of capabilities or a new bank of music or a new um, part of the structure of the song or something like that. So um, and this is not dissimilar to like Mickey Mousing. Who wants to guess what Mickey Mousing is? No, I've already explained it to you. Have you? <laughs> 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 Mickey Mousing. Mickey Mousing. Oh, okay. And as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> that was totally like <laughs> separate. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I, I've got no idea. Yeah. It's, it is. <laughs> it's like Warner Brothers cartoons and the score. Does that give any more hints? What does the score do in Warner Brothers cartoons? I think yeah. it is sort of like a mimic to what's happening. So it's very yeah. useful, like brass and string yeah, things yeah, to yeah. kind of mimic. The form of the sound that could be happening, and they don't use real objects, they use. Yeah. 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 So, what, what would the sound of someone going up the stairs sound like? Yeah. It's a kind of. It's a kind of like Fantasia, is that where the Mickey Mouse yeah. is the reference to? Um, the reference is to most Warner Brothers um, cartoons in general. Yeah. So. Where the score follows movement that's happening. Um, mm -hmm. in, I'm just gonna like. Fantasia is a good example. Yeah. Fantasia is a good example, but it does happen in all of their cartoons. So where someone is running up a 
Cliff or something goes. Wah, wah, boom. Something like that. And that's all the score. They don't have Foley or something. You know, you don't make a trumpet sound when you go. There's no trumpet, right? Wah, wah. That's a trumpet sound. So, you know. Um, so this is happening in games, and in those days they would get the orchestra, the conductor would be looking at the cartoon and the orchestra at the same time and conducting as he went, because um, it was always a he then. Um, and now we have all of these triggers and more procedural based scores and things. So we look at games, they're very music based, and you know we can look at the first well, not the first one, but really well-known ones like Audio Surf and Big Ribbon and things where um, the music is there and you don't have a choice on whether the music is there or not. That's what is giving you that momentum. Um, but then we can look at other games begin to bridge that gap. So where there's Guitar Hero and things come in, the guitar line doesn't play unless you're playing mm. and it just drops out otherwise. But all the other instruments are there. Um, and then we look at games where you are generating all the music and <laughs> it doesn't happen as much, Sound unfortunately. <laughs> hey? Sound of Sound of Sound of Well, there's music to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is something like Proteus? Proteus yeah. Proteus trial or something? I don't know. Actually. Um, so uh, Proteus procedurally generates the soundtrack and level at yeah. every start game. Um, and your interaction in that, I guess, is moving around an environment. So when you look up at the cloud, the cloud sound comes in, which is a nice orchestral layer or something like but that. But if you don't move, it doesn't play anything, or does it? It does. Things are still happening around you. So things still okay. enter your vision without your control. So as my work comes in, is me trying to get people to experience musicianship in a way by having full control over what they're hearing and that being the main interaction as well. So if we think of, um, <laughs> yeah. for me, in my own work, I was wondering if we get up to this or not. That's why I haven't paid more attention. Um, I've put in, sort of made up these terms, and I'm still working on them, and they're still very overlapping, but I've thought about the types of interaction that sound has with other things, or what types of interaction there even are, yeah? And as someone who hasn't studied games or HCI or anything like that, um, this is interaction from a composer's perspective. So as far as music in a film, it's quite passive, right? The viewer can pause or play, play it, that's it. Um, and often the score doesn't interact with characters necessarily either. Um, who knows what diegetic and non-diegetic mean? Me? Have I also explained this to you? <laughs> no, I didn't oh, this is in games. In okay. uni. Cool. Or before then. Yeah. English. Go. Contextual and non-contextual audio, or not even audio. Yeah. Just whether it's in the scene or not in the scene. Yeah, so it's it's most, it's usually referred to in audio because this is where it becomes quite clear cut. Um, where, say something like, the two characters in the film walk past a church and the church bells go off, that's diegetic music. Um, so there's maybe a radio in the scene, this is all diegetic. So are the characters talking um, and where it gets complicated is things like Foley, where we know that it's sort of laid on top. Ah, uh, no, 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 that's not good. <laughs> Foley. Um, narrators are not, are non-diegetic, and the score on top is non-diegetic. Where these things start to align is where, um, you know, you're listening to the radio in the scene and there's a low-pass filter on there, so it sounds like a radio but then it all sort of rises in volume and the EQ filter comes off and then it's part of the score, yeah? So that's where it bridges and non-diegetic, is it? Diegetic and non-diegetic. Um, 
same when I guess it's it's similar to when a character um, bridges the fourth wall, right? They look straight into the camera and say, "Fancy that," or you know, whatever they the piece of paper audience. I'm thinking of like Malcolm in the Middle, or yeah, Deadpool. Whoever said Deadpool? <laughs> um, so does it only come from music, or does it come from certain visuals as well? I think it, it actually originally came from um, literature and how actors. Um, not the fourth wall, but but the yeah, diagenic, yeah. because diagenic, uh, yeah, like comes from literature. I think ten years ago, companies started to incorporate their their logos into the starting scene, like Paramount yeah. the, mo the mountain. You yeah. just use this yeah. as the entrance point to the first scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Th this could be actually the same. I hadn't thought about that at all. Yeah. Like yeah. it's a diagenic thing. I think it happens in <laughs> games more yeah. as we have that um, multi. Oh, that transmedia, I guess, and there are a lot of people calling it, you were at the big row that I was at, yeah. um, someone had a talk on, like, meta games or something where... Oh, meta text. Meta text, yeah. right. Paratext, sorry. Paratext, okay, yeah. cool. That's <laughs> not even what I was like. Um, it's one of those messy things in print that it's <coughs> very easy to define and difficult to actually use. <laughs> yeah, cool. how I sort of interpret it is like, you know those Skylanders? Oh, I don't know, maybe I just hate a lot of kids. It's a game. <laughs> it's a video yeah. game with Skylanders toys that you can buy at Kmart. And they're toys. But you can also put in the code and then they appear in the game as well. So it's an extra purchasing power, I guess. And Disney, of course, is the first to sort of mainstream that one. Um, now there are more games coming out like Fabulous Beasts where it's... Um, has anyone heard about Fabulous Beasts? So it's a Kickstarter, yeah, um, game that's been like totally funded out of this world. Um, where and it's gonna keep going on. Who knows if it's about until to pizza. Just keep going. Until pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, where you have a, a stand with a little scanner on there, and you have all of these beasts, and they've got interesting shapes that are good and bad for balancing on. So it's like Jenga, but beasts um, and so you put them on the stand or you scan them they appear on your iPad and then you put them on the stand and then they appear in the environment on the iPad um, which the only one that I've seen so far is like a beach right yeah so you put your elephant on and then your elephant appears on the beach and then um, they've got different like animal um, characteristics or things so that you can like merge your elephant with an eagle and then you get this eagle elephant thing and that appears in your environment. Um, so that's a weird roundabout way of defining diegetic and non-diegetic <laughs> and where the, <laughs> where the bridge <laughs> where the bridge is. Um, it did come from literature and how actors interpret text. So is interaction, <laughs> in, is score triggered from interaction in diegetic or non-diegetic or does it matter if there's a button in the scene or not? I don't think it matters if it's diegetic or non-diegetic. Just definition. Yeah. yeah. Um, what is the game? What is art? <laughs> <laughs> how, how would you put something like, um, you know, in um, Breathless, right? Where, like you just We're not familiar with Breathless. Hmm? Not familiar with Breathless. Oh, it's a uh, it's gypsies film where Jean Gaudin, it's like he, cut, he jump cuts or whatever, but he did it with sound as well. Like yeah. one of these random pieces of soundtrack cutting in and out and yeah, really cool. abruptly in a way, you know, it's almost like they stopped the tape player. Yeah, well, if it was in the 60s, they were probably actually cutting the tape and <laughs> gluing it together. And you can see ghosts in the background. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was the question? I was just wondering in, in, in what, like, like if that's kind of like, it's kind of like bringing attention to the soundtrack as a soundtrack, as yeah. opposed to using the soundtrack to augment the yeah. scene. Yeah, yeah. Um, I get told off a lot of, um, for doing that by game designers <laughs> and I don't deliberately do it, I'm just making music that's better than the game. So, <laughs> <laughs> too much attention is gone to the music. <laughs> <laughs> um, I told a group of maybe 50 game design students that all the, their games should just be interactive music videos and that's how <laughs> they should think about it in the future. <laughs> Um, didn't impressed. know what to think. Hey? They weren't impressed. I don't think they quite like. They were first few. I don't know if they were attached to the, the game idea yet. I don't know. Um, 
I think it was when he burned out the press for some reason. He was at the match and bang. Yeah. Okay, alright. How to match music to the game. Um, like, yeah, because we talked about figures and stuff like that earlier in the song. Yeah, so. okay, alright. Um, so the simplest, simplest interaction with music in games is where on the start of the game, so when the when you press play, um, you'll have like, let's say, three layers of music. And if we're talking about like an orchestra or something, let's say it's a violin layer, a cello layer, and a double bass layer. So we're going from high to low. Only one of them might have sound. So let's say cello comes in. The other ones will give, sorry, I meant volume. Um, the other ones will give no volume, yeah? So, say you're in game, the character's like, oh, it's cello, yay. Um, looking around, looks out the door, ah, violin comes in, because there's murderers. That's what violins mean. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Coming back to that. There was one time I said, when we look at the door and a violin comes in, someone walks through the door, and it was excellent. And so now I have to do it all of the time. That was like the fifth time that I did it, and I was like, this is great. Now I have to do it all the time. <laughs> it hasn't happened since, but whatever. <laughs> um, so now we have those two layers on, no murderers at the door, and we look back and the violin comes back out again. So that's how we put those triggers in. So there's three, the reason that we've started them at the start um, of the game is so that they are in sync. Um, because, say they're four bar loops or something, and they're all four bars and they all start at the same time. So they all... I thought it was about to stay in sync for the entire time and Mm. So it gets switched on and off or something. Yeah, it's the volume gets switched on and off. Right. Yeah. Are they are they loops, continuous loops that that that, that, that yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're just loops and you could you could see them as channels, you know. Yeah. Only channel two is on and then channel three comes on and channel three comes off and then um we look at maybe um what else? The dog and the the bass comes in or something like that and then turns out your dog is a murderer and the violin comes in too and then you've got all three because you're you and the dog and the murderer <laughs> and then all three come in and then if you stop being you all three cut out and um maybe another sort of sting comes in so in music um for games we think about those layers that are constant and then we also think about stings which are that one-off, not a loop. Um, one Things that can come in at any point, usually, but we can also use timers to sort of quantize it to a beat. So um, to the nearest two seconds that have passed, that sort of, mm-hmm. yep, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and they're, they're one-off triggers, they're not loops. Yeah, so that they can come in at any point and they're really good at describing transitions um, yep. Oh, so it's something with loops. Um, how yeah. hard is it to get the continuity between the breaks between mm-hmm. the end of the loop and the beginning of the loop? Not hard. It's really easy. Yeah. 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 Big inspiration. Yeah. Well, it's, we well, generally no, do. Just dozen cuts. Mm. Oh, yeah. you mean between the end and the start? Yeah. 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 So you just <laughs> yeah, you don't. I just make um, a perfect loop. <laughs> software. <laughs> Um, so, so often, uh, so if for some reason you're struggling making a perfect loop because it doesn't, um, the start and end don't both enter zero at the same time, um, often software can render as loops, so where the tail of the last note will decay at the start of the loop, and then that's where we would have to have that thing that, you know, so rises in volume to the loop um, at the start of the game, and then all the loops happen. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then we'll never hear that entry again, then it will just be loops after that. So, but yeah, that is, that is one of those things that, as I teach composers, can be a, um, a conceptual and a software limitation. So often, um, Composers will 
aimed their four bars um, in a very neat phrase or something. Ah, no dice. Um, or they'll end, they'll end in a way that doesn't make it repeating sound very nice. So they've made this four bars a complete piece of music, and if it repeats, then it's slightly weird. Um, putting cadences in wrong spots. So there's sorts of sounds that sound resolved. Um, if suddenly everything sounds resolved and then you're going to repeat something, this is where um, that dissonance between gameplay and music happens. So something happens in the music and the player's like, well, oh, something's happened. And they haven't actually unlocked a new thing. <laughs> or then they're just like, you know, all right, when I, when I press A, B, B, A, B, like I did then, and the music happened, something happens, you know, and we get those like weird little tricks that people make up when they're playing Mario or Pokemon or, or Zelda or something where, you know, if they go to the dungeon through this route instead of this one, um, some secret unlocks or something. And music can be one of those really, really misleading hints, um, which is which is very fun and because composers are generally drilled into our head is consistency and variation um, where we have that sort of contrast and calm and contrast and calm and on in a way to bring new ideas and come back um, for the listener as a as someone playing a game that can be really like what's going on like why is all there's all this stuff happening I can't see any of it ah, and that's quite stressful um, yeah, so often even just like a new line coming in, if it's if it um, adds any tension at all, it becomes very misleading. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, I don't know if you want to wait. No, <laughs> um, no, no, it's fine. Um, is it the case now that um, people uh, do you have any like memory constraints from I don't know, like because obviously when you're packaging uh, a game, yeah. do, yeah. does it actually affect your pro composing? Um, it does to an extent. So a student. A game design student asked me, as I went through that layering system, they said, how many layers can you have? And I had brought my composition students to that class and I was like, come on composers, you can answer this. And someone said, you know, how good is your computer? And I said, what you should have asked was how much you're gonna pay the composer. But you know, <laughs> <it's so laughs> I have a million layers for a million dollars, yay. <laughs> um, yeah, so we do think about that, you know, we think about mobile games, really small ones, you don't want it to be over 10 meg, and then you sort of get up to 30 meg, the next tier, and then there's like 60 meg. Um, for browser-based games, um, audio tends to be one of the only reasons that text-based games need a loading screen, you know? Um, <laughs> you know, it's just like, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I was thinking about the device actually. Like, is it? I guess it's really different to design the soundtrack of a game, which is which is going to be on your mobile. phone. Yeah. So basically, you don't pay the sound. <laughs> yeah. You see what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so how's it going to be? I guess you can just get away with more on a phone. Okay. Um, they're probably not going to have it very loud. Mm. Um, you also have to think about bass a lot. So especially now when we're all really into dubstep and stuff, mm. um, yeah. bass lines don't even come out of those speakers on a phone yeah. at all. It's just totally gone. This whole big part of the spectrum is just gone. And so you have to compress things and put up, you know, three octaves for bass, bass line. And then so we do have to think about orchestration a bit. If everything is in the same um, sort of range, sonic range, then there's just too much information, everything feels a bit muddy, and then mm -hmm. your ears get a bit tired, and um, yeah, there. That's the main thing about phones, is the, is the baseline. Um, people do ask, you know, how do you feel knowing that people are not going to listen to your soundtrack very much? And it's like, well... I got paid. <laughs> yeah, well, I got paid, yay. Um, but also, like, I get sick of game soundtracks pretty fast, and I turn down just the music track and put in my own music, so I can still get all the like foley and and um, often in like MMOs, which is what I used to play a lot. Um, 
the sound of spells and things wouldn't count as the music track, so I could still like get basically all of the cues, which was nice. Um, what else was that? Yeah, it's interesting that, so when you are releasing apps for phones and stuff, you can um, control what the um, customer's gonna see when you go on the app store. So, you know, if you're an iPhone 5, mm. you could make a version four of that if you, if you yeah. wanted. It doesn't really happen that much. Um, but, you know, if we know that this iPhone's got better speakers than that iPhone, um, you could change. No one does, but you could if you wanted. Um, Android's another story because we have unlimited phones. So can we just get maybe one or two more questions for me? Then we can wrap up. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah. If a buyer wanted to murder us, which I agree with, yeah. <laughs> what other characters do you associate the instruments with? Ah, oh, I always think of like Peter and the Wolf. Did anyone listen to that scene? Yeah, yeah. he was a clarinet cat. Uh, why? learn clarinet. Oh, that's how I convinced myself not to learn saxophone because the clarinet is a cat. That's cool. Um, <laughs> that's sort of it. <laughs> that's the only thing that There's I... There's large people and incredibly good brass instruments. Yeah. Yeah. Large animals yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And I mean, that comes down to pitch as well. So physically, you know, with physics, Bigger things make lower sounds because they're bigger. Yeah. What I find that the the sound like crystal for Kelly and also is a synthesizer uh, sound on the tenth end of the fourth frequency. So that yeah. was talking about the manner of the tone. I think using that way is maybe more efficient and the one way to remember things than using the root thing that can be put all the yeah, so I, um, yeah, one of the big ways to work with efficiency is making making those effects part of the engine rather than on the music side. Yeah. So yeah, so something like footsteps. Um, footsteps, you don't want to hear the same footsteps each each time. So you randomize the EQ, you know, to shift down or up between yeah, five or whatever yeah yeah so most game engines now have um, quite a limited amount of sound capabilities so I mean Unity's got a pretty iconic Doppler effect which is just terrible you have to just <laughs> turn it right down um, and then it's, it's like sort of okay but yeah most things have got a delay a pitch shift reverb um, and EQ to an extent as well, or you are able to um, detect frequencies in a, in a noisy sort of way. Yeah. Um, so those sorts of things are, are really good, is randomizing things, pitch shifting things as well. So there are a fair few um, games where, um, oh, I'm just trying to think of, a friend made a game that's like, sort of similar to Pac-Man, but there's a lot of solid lines and uh, I don't know, so the length of the line um, would align with the frequency of a sine wave or something like that, so it would go higher and lower. Um, and that, yeah, definitely limits it, which is really, really good. And it's also good for the composer as well. I don't have to make 100 different footstep sounds. I can just be like, randomised between this and this. and um, like some of the Excel spreadsheets that I've had to deal with where I've had to make them myself because they don't want to do it or I'm not being paid enough to figure out how to do it. Um, it's just like, ah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay thank you. <laughs>